Hi. I'm Aaron Brown, VP of Engineering at MadHive. Um, we love blockchain. We're a blockchain ad tech company based here in New York. Thank you very much to AppNexus for hosting this. Um, so, blockchain. Blockchain is easy. I know that's kind of a hard sell after everything you heard, but we think, we think blockchain is easy and we're gonna to try to convince you that blockchain is easy. So, last summer at MadHive, we had a bit of an internal hackathon. And, you know, usual hackathon rules, you get one beer per commit. And about <laughs> 72 hours later, um, we had this. This was a complete decentralized blockchain real time ad server, um, which we were kind of proud of at the time. And um, since we're here at a tech talk, let's dig into the tech. So ad serving on a blockchain is a little bit different. So I'm gonna take a little blockchain liberty with the, the terminology, but really what happens is lots of information needs to get written to the ledger. That information is mediated by smart contracts. So when you're an advertiser and you wanna put your campaign data into the ledger, you write that into a smart contract, and then say like a consumer's device who wants to view ads, their device connects to the blockchain via a smart contract. Then there are matching servers, and these are sort of like DMPs, maybe a little SSP, DSP. Thank you for introducing all the terminology, save me. But it's a little bit all in one, but basically the matching server says, hey, okay, you're this person, I see this ad, you two need to go together. And so then the customer sees his ad, and that information is again written to the blockchain ledger. And all of these parties are sort of polling information. Everybody's sort of seeing the same thing. And so advertisers see the same things, publishers see the same things. And then, of course, we have this new entity, the miner. The miner's job is to sort of take all the information that's being seen, group it up, put it on blocks onto the blockchain. And uh, we actually have this live. Let me see if I can pull this up. Yeah, so uh, as you saw from the slide, we built this on JP Morgan's Quorum backbone, and uh, you know, props to them because I don't think anybody's tended this thing since last summer. It's still chugging away. Uh, so what you see down there in the bottom right, that's uh, the consumer's ad. All of these four panes, these are, they're next to each other just sort of like to see into it, but everything is live, open, and connected to the blockchain. Everything you're seeing is completely decentralized. So the ad view comes in, the IP, the user agent that goes on the blockchain, the matching server, matches to an ad. See the advertiser view, which might be a little small. There's a bunch of hash codes and things like that. This is real time coming off the blockchain. And the publisher is accumulating money, ad views, they see what's happening. And then of course we have the miner. Um, down below this, if you go to the website, uh, it's, there's also F stats, you sort of like real time view into the blockchain. So, that was three days' work. A lot of read the manual. It's not too bad, I promise. Um, but what did we accomplish? So we saw everything. Anybody? Audience? Yeah, that's your test, blockchain lesson. I'll help you, transparency. Everything was there. So transparency is good. Uh, we like that. Causes some problems in business when everybody sees everybody else's business, but it stops fraud. Uh, and reconciliation is pretty easy, because it's all there. Didn't happen on the blockchain, didn't happen. Um, it's not too bad when there's just a few nodes and a few small number of people. Uh, if you try to take that to hundreds of thousands or millions of ad views per second, it's not gonna work, it's too slow. Um, and then this other thing I brought up here, still centralized. Uh, and that's a little funny because it sort of took us a little while to get our head around that, but one of the problems is, you saw in the data flow diagram, that everything was going in and out of smart contracts, and so sort of even though we built this whole thing out of decentralized tech, it's all just smart contracts, and one entity controls all the entrances, all the exits, and so it is literally the centralized ad tech stack dropped on a blockchain, still centralized. So, Really, what we set out to do, we didn't really do. 
Um, and so there was some sort of thinking about that, like, you know, what, what went wrong? Like, we did blockchain, like, we're there, you know, we, we, we made it. Um, and we started thinking about this idea about, like, you know, like, what problem does blockchain really solve for us? And uh, we think the answer is that blockchain is how you do collaboration. Blockchain solves the work of how you do collaborative work. And if you go back and look at this kind of thing, like, oh, okay, we had a lot of parties reading and writing from the blockchain, but they were just sort of working independently doing the things that they do right now on the existing legacy ad tech stack. They didn't really get to any kind of collaborative work until that last final second, they collaboratively built a report. And so we saw some benefit, you know, we got the transparency, the reconciliation, but we weren't really using the tech to its full advantage. So we say blockchain is not our destination. It's not where we're all trying to get to because once we get there, it's kind of underwhelming. Uh, blockchain is the origin. Blockchain is a foundational technology that we can start to do real collaborative work together. Collaborative work requires trust. You know, we can't really work together. We do business, we use banks together. Um, and trust has traditionally lived in application layer. Um, you know, as developers, we use these protocols, which are, you know, the old protocols there, you could say they're sort of decentralized. Nobody really owns HTTP, TCP, stuff like that. Um, but everybody sort of talks the same standard. But the real trust is gonna be in the application layer. And you see the biggest applications in ad tech that were built, Google, Facebook, um, outside of ad tech, you know, banks. These are huge, valuable companies. So it sort of shows you how much value is in trust. Now we go to the blockchain, the same thing is true. The protocol layer is the decentralized aspect and the application layer is the centralized aspect. But the trust is now given to us at the protocol layer. And so what happens is we can sort of write these centralized applications on top of these great protocols and get the full advantage of trust without having to reach out to another party. So this brings up an important question. Is my blockchain project a distributed application or is it a protocol? Um, before, when we were doing a hackathon, we just said, oh, it's blockchain. Um, there's a bit more nuance to it. Really what we made was a DAP. And so DAPs, we have smart contracts. The smart contracts are usually written by one entity. And another thing that sort of happened is we were putting all this ad data right on the ledger. And so application data was sort of limited by the throughput of the blockchain. And everyone at Antec knows that's sort of a big problem. Protocols. Protocols are sort of like our agreement that we're gonna work together. So we're starting with blockchain and we're kind of building on that. And Blockchain, while it's a collaborative work thing, there's also some like pre-work to be done. There's off-chain collaboration. There's lots of authors. We have to be mutually interested in sort of doing this thing together. Um, we have to make a standard. We're gonna do peer review. We're gonna make requests for comments, white papers, and not the ones that you can buy online, they're like 50 bucks, like, uh, you know, real white papers. Yellow papers to sort of prove out that everything that we're suggesting is mathematically sound. Protocols often support lots of distributed applications. And really important to our industry is now that you've decoupled application data and protocol data, if you keep the protocol to the layer that's writing into the blockchain, your application data is unbounded. So things we can do with our new protocol. Privacy, not something you see in ad tech too often. Um, but privacy can be cool. And from an engineering standpoint, we'll go into how that could work. Um, lots of people here, I hope, are familiar with the legacy stack. You know, we have this idea about a protocol stack, and it makes our engineering life a lot easier because at each level, like the IP and the TCP, these guarantee like delivery of data. TLS guarantees security. Each level makes a guarantee up to the higher levels. And so I don't have to worry 
when I get up to the app and HTTP level. That's like my like REST and open RTB data. I don't have to worry about you know, these like problems anymore. They're guaranteed from the stack below. A kind of similar thing happens in the blockchain stack. So in our POC, we had dApps sort of running directly on the blockchain. Um, and we had problems. And we could have been served very well if we had a very specific ad protocol in between sort of mediating those requests and making guarantees anchored in the blockchain and sort of providing guarantees in turn up to our dApps. So privacy is kind of a hard problem, but it's a cool engineering problem. Um, and the way to start thinking about privacy is limiting the distance that data travels. So we've seen those big, long ad tech pipelines where data just flies all over the place, already bad enough, nobody can keep count of anything. Then the government comes in and says, oh, well, you had a problem keeping count of impressions, now you gotta keep count of a lot more stuff, or you're gonna go out of business. So these are problems. So let's start with, from the ground up, let's keep data in one place. And since we're doing privacy, Let's keep it with the consumer. And the consumer is the only person that has their data. Um, this is kind of hard, but it opens a lot of really cool possibilities. So the way we do this is we introduce the concept of an agent. The agent is sort of your digital counterpart. It literally lives in your device, um, all of your devices. It is cryptographically sealed. So any data that you put in your agent stays there. It never leaves. Um, some very smart people did some very smart math and they made sure that works. And what the agent is responsible for is sort of this communication layer between the privacy by design ad protocol and applications running above it. So for example, like in this kind of advertising ecosystem, what advertisers do is they create machine learning models. And that's a little scary for some, but don't underestimate ad tech. There's a lot of really smarts in there. We do a lot of really good machine learning now. And so there is kind of a natural transition here to move from targeting ads traditionally to say, hey, I just have this model of what my customer looks like. You know, if you check these boxes, I want you to see my ad. And so advertisers create these models and they're released into the protocol level. Now, when your application wants to show an ad, you don't make an ad request out to an exchange or to say like an SSP. You make an ad request to your own device. That's where the agent resides. And the agent says, okay, cool. You know, has maybe models in or goes and gets some models, executes these models totally inside the agent. And then once it finds an appropriate advertisement, that ad is then returned up to the DAP. All of these sort of stages um, are sort of very carefully orchestrated, but the engineering is made a lot simpler by layering the stack like this. Each layer makes guarantees to the next. So the blockchain gives us a base layer of security. You know, hey, if these bits go here, everyone saw it, and you can build smart security protocols on top of that. Then higher up, you can sort of do things that can handle the exchange of machine learning models. That way, stuff gets to where it needs to be, but nobody can really exploit that to figure out, you know, who is really seeing this or what private information resides in that agent. And then, of course, the agent can then do that serve the ad up to the DAP. So, what can privacy do for my business? This is kind of important, you know, we're here, blockchain, blockchain's fun, we love blockchain, but sometimes people wanna make money. Well, we hear a lot of important things about sort of privacy, privacy is good, but there's sort of, there's other problems, you know, like if GDPR is a problem for us and privacy, is a fundamental human right. You know, are we at odds with our own consumers? Like that's probably not good and definitely not sustainable. But there are more problems in the ad tech pipeline. Everybody's sort of, you know, trying to game. There's fraud, there's accounting problems. Big companies are bullies. Um, lots of things sort of need to be reset to make this industry work for us. So when you have a privacy by design system, Advertisers get better targeting. That's because inside the agent, if the custom, the consumer can trust the agent to really hold their data, then advertisers have the opportunity to target on that and they can get really good targeting. Publishers, 
So now all this targeting has been removed from this long data pipeline. And it all happens at the edge. And so all of these ad requests are evaluated objectively. So publishers can get the real value for their inventory. Consumers, this is kind of cool. So not only do you get privacy, but if you are free to tell your agent anything that you want to, you can be really candid with your agent. Like it's not going anywhere. And so now you're almost like participating in the advertising experience. It's sort of a novel concept. I've, I've never seen it out in the wild, but I'm ready for it. Like I want to sort of control what I'm seeing and I want to see what I want to see. Brand safety. This is really big. Advertisers in the current ecosystem are really kind of helpless. You know, they sort of, hey, I have this banner ad or a video, please get it somewhere. There's no control. Um, here, when you have these machine learning models, that at every single step of the way, we've done all the work to ensure that absolute privacy is maintained, the advertiser has total control over how their ad is shown, where it's shown, the manner, what places. And so they can preserve that. Fraud. One of the cool sort of side effects here is that when your device is running the agent, we can make guarantees using these neat cryptographic tricks that that device is only running one agent. And so now if you want to run like methbot or any kind of like other fraud or some kind of future fraud, you don't just get to fire a PC, load a million copies of this thing, get firing off ads. You got to fill a warehouse full of iPhones and Samsung TVs, and you get one agent per device. And that makes fraud really expensive, hopefully too expensive. And then of course, since your data is not moving anymore, you get regulatory compliance for free. So we're really excited about our new blockchain future. Lots of other companies are excited about it. And this is just a part of the list of the companies that are helping to make this our new ad tech future. And so we, at Madhive at least, and I think many other companies, when we talk about is the blockchain ready for ad tech, uh, we think the blockchain is ready. We're waiting for ad tech. Thank you.